Hello friend, it's Mark out on the back 40. And uh, this episode I wanted to share with you what I'm learning as I go through this no-till food plot journey. So I'm in a plot right now that this spring I rototilled this plot, which I hope is the last time I ever have to do that. But I did rototill the plot. And I had to do that because I had to throw a little bit more lime on it. So uh, threw the lime on, rototilled it in, and uh, God willing, I'll never have to rototill it again. But I just want to show you, and it's kind of hard to see because it's morning right now, but um, this, this is a, a mix of sorghum and corn and buckwheat and oats and radishes. There's a bunch of stuff in here, but mostly what you see is the um, sorghum and corn. But it's... It, it's it's, num it's two things that I see here. Number one, it's not growing as tall as what I'm going to show you here in a second. And number two, it's not doing really bad right now, but a week ago before we got a little bit of rain, it was curling up and it was not doing well. It was really light green. It was curling up. It was really struggling in the dryness. And uh, the other part that I'm going to show you where I haven't really tilled for, I think, three seasons now, I was doing much better. So let's uh let's over there head over there and take a look at that one so i think i'll take you on a ride with me here's here's the what we call the wedding plot and the reason it's called a wedding plot i'm not sure if you can see that out there but there's an arch <laughs> a wooden arch out there my uh my son matthew got married out there last september so i hopped in the golf cart you can see i'm just uh gonna ride for about five more seconds so hang in there but it's right, it's probably not even a hundred yards away. Is the so it's the same soil. I mean it's flat, it's the same soil right over here. And here we are. So this now, look at the difference here. This has not been rototilled in I believe three years. But look at the size of this stuff. This stuff is crazy. It's so tall. If I stand in here, this stuff has got to be. Oh my gosh, I mean, it's up here. It's eight foot tall. Look at that thing. So this is the same soil, the same everything. I mean, it's only 100 yards apart, and you can just see the huge difference that it has in what's going on. So I think it's nutrition, but most the, what I think the most is right now is moisture. This is sandy soil out here, but I'm just making the case for um, no-till. I mean, I just think that you have to stop rototilling your food plots if you have any kind of light soil or sandy soil because this is what can happen if you stop doing that. I mean, it's just, it's so tall, it's so thick. Yeah, so probably the, the tallest, the tallest uh, plant out in the wedding plot, the one back there that I rototilled this year, is probably maybe six foot tall. And look at this, I'm standing next to this thing right here. Look at this, this is as high as I can reach, which is probably eight foot, and it's another foot and a half beyond that. So this is probably almost 10 foot tall, and it's right next to the same plot. So it's, yeah, I mean, I think you get the point, right? Like, stop belaboring it, Mark. But I just want to show you the evidence that no-till is the way to go with your food plots if you have light soil at all, because the moisture is almost more important than anything else. If it's got water, it's gonna grow. So I'm, uh, I'm definitely a proponent of no-till, and now I'm really trying to figure out how to do no-till at an economical cost for the equipment. Because I've been set up with a rototiller, rototiller, cultipacker, spreader, sprayer, I've got all that stuff for my tractor. And so I'm, I'm really good at disking it up, <laughs> disturbing soil, traditional stuff. But now I got to convert, so I'm really trying to figure out how to do that without spending 15 grand on a no-till grain drill. <laughs> 